Newton's uh, first law. Let's examine it and then let's refute it. What? Newton's wrong? Oh my god, no! <laughs> Corpus omne persevare in satu quosiende vel movende una formator in directum nisse quatentes ilund in vibras impressi cogitur statum sum mutare. Everybody tends to continue in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line <laughs> until it is act up acted upon by an outside force. Oh my god, there's some bad words there. Um, you think Newton was right? <laughs> now, we're not going to dispute uh, force equals mass times acceleration. However, even the denotative parts of that equation are incorrect in denotation. That math is, of course, correct. That's Newton's second law. Um, that's not a contention. I mean, those are used for uh, for uh, missile uh, uh, missile uh, calculations and uh, and uh, rocket trajectories. I mean, it's used for all sorts of stuff. That's not in contention. Newton's three laws, however, are in contention because they're complete nonsense. I'm not the first person to say this. Like Walter Russell's the uh, first person among many who uh, pointed out the many insane inconsistencies in Newton's three laws of motion, because they're complete and absolute bullshit. Um, we hold Newton a really high acclaim. No, we really shouldn't. Um, act upon. What does he mean by act upon? Physically touch? Acting upon in contact? What, what defines action? He's talking about action as far as a field, like one thing accelerating towards another. Because there's nothing physically touching when we have uh, dielectric acceleration or what we call gravity. Force? Why does motion or change of motion have anything to do with force? When something falls, let's say a rock on the edge of a cliff falls, there is no force involved. That's acceleration. Force and motion is the complete opposite of inertia and acceleration. Inertia and acceleration are potential. Force and motion are the release of some or all of that potential. That is the expression of the loss of inertia or potential, is force and motion. Maybe we'll say uh, Newton wasn't hit on the head by a falling apple, by the way. Newton was occasioned, as the, as the story goes, by a falling apple. Now, if Newton had actually waited you know, a couple weeks, he would have noticed that after the apple had fallen, it would have re-arisen. What the hell? As the apple actually deteriorated and its gaseous constituents off-gassed, Newton would have noticed, if he sat there long enough, he would have noticed that after the apple fell, it would have, part of it, of course, would have gone to the dirt and the worms, but let's just ignore the worms. It would return to the earth like the seeds and whatnot. But much of the apple, as so far as its liquid components and its gaseous uh, molecular off-gassing, would have floated back up into the air. Do you know why? Because everything in the universe is PM, pressure mediation. So he talks about action. Continue in a straight line until acted upon by an outside force. Well, acceleration is not a force. Outside? Nothing is ever outside a field. Everything is always in some field, whether it's weak or strong. So nothing is ever outside. Let's talk about a straight line here in a second. All motion is curvilinear, like a dog that's on a leash that's staked to the ground. I mean, it can only go around like this. And actually, as the dog winds its way around with the leash and the stake, it'll eventually wind its way like a vortex right back to the center again. Have you ever seen that happen before? There's no such thing as a straight line. There's not a single straight line in the entire universe. No straight line exists. So Newton's notion of a straight line is the biggest absurdity of Mother Nature that's even possibly imaginable. All motion has its null point in inertia, which is the source of all force and motion anyway. There are no straight lines in the universe. Even a pencil, let's just say this is a pencil, laying on a table is not at rest in many different modalities. If it were not from the atomic homeostasis of the molecules and atoms holding its mass together, if the pure potential of this uh, pencil which is sitting here watch well, this sitting there no it's not everything is in perpetual motion all phenomena 
is the denotation of force and motion, even if it's in temporary homeostasis. If you're able to release the total complete potential of the molecules and atoms in a pencil, I mean, you'd end up with something bigger than a fucking thermonuclear bomb. The pencil would wipe your shit right off the face of the earth and your house and probably half of your city if all the absolute potential in the molecules and atoms of that pencil were to release. Okay, that's undeniable, right? Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Uh -huh. All bodies are perpetually being acted upon by external acceleration. No body ever moves in a straight line. There are no straight lines in the universe. Everything in the universe is curvilinear. It's curvilinear because all force and motion is tied to, just like the dog to that uh, leash, which is staked to the center of a ground, all force and motion is staked to inertial. This is why all uh, seashells are a vortex, they're a spiral. This is why vortexes and spirals exist at every level of the universe, from macro to micro, and vice versa. There are no fucking straight lines. Mother Nature doesn't, well, this is a straight line right here, look at this crap, you know? No, that's not what I'm talking about. There are no straight lines in the universe. Nothing continues. So Newton says, everybody continues in a state of rest or motion. Nothing continues. All motion is the expression of the loss of inertia as manifest in magnitude, in the case of matter, in motion. Matter and motion are one and the same things. In the expression of pressure mediation. The law was written to uh, fit the non-existent premises vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Isaac Newton's first law, mistakenly presumed to exist, but which in fact don't. A body cannot continue in a state of rest because bodies at rest do not exist in nature. Bodies are uh, waves of motion. Well, that's not a wave of motion. That's just a pencil sitting there on the table. No, it's not. That's just what you see. You see an apple fall to the ground... All you have to do is wait a while and you'll see it deteriorate and it will rise back up again into the atmosphere and dissipate itself. Apple will fall and eventually the apple will rise again. It's like it'll rise again. <laughs> when motion ceases, bodies cease to be. This is actually a quote from uh, Walter Russell, this particular little passage. One might as well appropriately refer to sound as being rest and silence. Very good one there, uh-huh. For sound is matter and motion like all other bodies. A body cannot continue its uniform motion in a straight line in this radial universe of curved pressure gradients. Such a phenomena is impossible. Yes, here Walter Russell is 100% correct. Likewise, all bodies are continuously being acted upon by two outside opposing forces, not one uh, intermittent force. That was Walter Russell quote. So anyway, absolutely no body in the universe is at rest. Matter by denotation is the definition of force, motion, magnitude, and a dynamo that's uh, ever in motion and unre unrest. Anything that is a body that we deem a body, like this light bulb's a body, this pencil's a body, this table's a body, nothing that has magnitude, and magnitude is magnetism, and magnetism is force in motion. There is no such, there's absolutely no such bullshit. It's the most absurd convention to think of a body being at rest. So Isaac Newton is not only wrong, he's, he's bleeping wrong. Weight, by the way, also, as I've said before, is location-specific, medium-specific, vector-specific, magnitude-specific, phase-specific, coherency-specific, and one other thing I'm going to leave unmentioned, because I don't like to let everything go. So, Newton's first law. Let's examine it again. Every body tends to continue in its state of rest. There's no such thing as rest. Or uniform motion. There's no such thing as uniform motion. In a straight line, no straight lines in the universe, unless it is acted upon. Acted upon how? Any body can be acted upon by a field. It can be destroyed or accelerated or impelled, depends on the field, the field modality. Acted upon how? It doesn't have to be touched. The same thing exists at every level, too. Everything it feels. Like if there's like some woman across the street and I give her like a creepy look like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not... I'm not actually physically out there touching somebody, right? She's like, oh, that's creepy. And then she, like, runs down the street. <laughs> I've never done that before in my life. Uh, that's pretty funny, though, isn't it?
you know, that's not, you know, what's, is there any interaction going on there? No, it's purely eye contact and consciousness. Well, that's not phenomena, is it? That's acting upon another body, right? If I whistle at someone, go, hey, and they turn their heads. That's not, no. Well, sure, that's sound vibrations. Okay, taking it a little too far. Acted upon by an outside force. Is it a force? Things are acted upon by either force or the complete opposite of a force, which is acceleration. This is a force. Me tossing this rope up, me dropping this rope is the complete opposite of force. That's acceleration. Well, let's see. This is force. This is acceleration. You know, something that simple, you think we would have been taught that shit in school, but we weren't taught that shit in school. This is acceleration. And this is force. You're not expelled X amount of calories and energy to impel a force in motion to this uh, Sharpie marker against the acceleration of gravity. Force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. So Newton's first law is absolute and total bullshit. Undeniably, irrefutably, existentially, and empirically so. And I will go over Newton's second and third laws, which are equally amounts bullshit. You feel me? Great. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you could always drop me a big juicy pizza or like a box of shortbread cookies. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm not kidding at all. Or tell me to jump off a cliff. You know, whatever makes you happy, whatever floats your boat, whatever tickles your pickle. Yeah, it's all good. All right? Sure it is. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you for watching. Catch you later. <laughs>